Hello everybody. Today I wanted to speak about design and transcending your design or transcending your hologenetic profile. Uh, and it might not be a super popular uh, topic, especially not in the human design world. Um, what I feel is a bit like, I'm going to take an example that doesn't have anything to do with design, but I did my uh, color palette uh, a year and a half ago and I was told that I am a dusky summer and that I'm supposed to wear colors that look like when it's dusky outside. It's a little bit like my background or a little bit, yes, those colors that are not completely bright. And I haven't been wearing black for over a year because it's not in my, it's, it's too strong for my, for my palette and my colors. And today I'm wearing black and it actually felt so cool because I have so many things that are black. I used to, only have black basically because I travel all the time and with black you can you can mix and match even different materials and it's it's always the same black <laughs> kind of so I had so many black things and then suddenly a year and a half ago I just had to stop wearing black and it was it was beautiful to, to bring in colors to my life again and to even choose the um, to even choose the backgrounds that I have that have a lot of color I have a lot more color in my life than I used to have and the beautiful thing too, though, is that now I went to my walk-in closet and I just have a lot of black things, dresses and, and like really cool stuff that I had even forgot that I had. Uh, and now it feels like rediscovering my wardrobe where I don't have to be so, so completely in, in that very narrow uh, palette, palette that, I, that I got. So there is something similar to this with, with design that when we first learn about it, and we have maybe in human design at least, Australian authority, and we really want to do that, you know, to the, we, we do, it's completely that. And then even worse in a way, when we start to learn about all the gates, all the channel, and all the details, maybe even into variable orientation, and we, it's kind of like, Life in one way, I always say that human design doesn't doesn't narrow us down, but in one way, it's like a lot of rules actually you have to think about before the, before it becomes natural, before that seven year cycle of of deconditioning. So you're still kind of going to kind of go wrong, and then you like go out to your not self, come back, kind of seeing what went wrong and adapting, right? And and I don't even know if it's really a seven year process anymore because I do feel like mutations are happening faster and that yeah it takes seven years for, for the body's cells to to completely change but there might be something more mystical about <laughs> how that can happen right uh, and with the gene keys there can also be a lot of contemplation it can all also become sometimes quite theoretical of like oh now I'm in the shadow again and you know it's like okay I just it, there's just a way of making those systems become quite mental and you know in one way defining like so we are we don't go outside of that oh i'm, I'm a projector i mean i don't know how many times i've heard it i'm projectors so I, I have to wait for invitation and then maybe contacting me saying like oh but if i have a really an idea that i'm really passionate about does it mean that i can't do it because i have to be invited you know, these kinds of things or I mean, there's so many examples of how we are using those systems that are amazing to box ourselves in and to not have the possibility to wear black, <laughs> you know, it's almost how, how, it, how it feels. And what I, and I, ha I was on a live today with, with Simone who works with us in Unlock Your Design and with Tim uh, from The Body Keys and we were speaking about Simone's uh, whole chart basically from, from inner authority and type all the way into PHS, into color, tone, like really, really, really deep into uh, how, you know, the lines and, and the colors and the tones. Um, and she's an emotional projector and I have nothing in my emotional center. So usually I can really feel when somebody's emotionally defined because I just don't have anything there. So it just goes all in and I can kind of read it. And it's often you know, nowadays it's kind of cool. When I was younger, it was kind of overwhelming, right? Because we still have that mutation going on in the solar plexus center and a lot of often the, the, the emotions or the wave, the, you know, the, the shadows, like we would say it in, in human design, uh, in, in the gene keys, kind of can, can often come up. And that can be when you have an open center, completely open center, and it amplifies in you, it's not super nice. So what I was saying is that for, she's a four six, and I haven't, felt her, like I haven't felt her wave ever. 
And I know that she, some days she does call me and she says, oh, today was a tough day. And then, you know, some days she's like so excited. So I know that, but that the weight of the emotional wave, the roller coaster of it has never amplified, amplified in me because she's taking responsibility somehow. I mean, that's kind of how I read it. She's taking responsibility for that in herself. So it doesn't actually go in to the open center and amplify it. So there is something here, and I mean, she's a four six, so there is something with the six nine being maybe. There is role modeling. What does it mean to, to live even beyond the sign so that that emotional center doesn't become the wave? I don't say that she might, you know, I, I, the strategy of waiting until clarity is probably still a good strategy for her. But it's just that your not self is not going to kind of evaporate in the world, whether the not self comes from a defined center or an undefined center. For me, there is always, always ways in all the gates of living out the low frequency. And that's probably a little bit more like a gene key perspective of it. But I see almost as much as not self I see in the open centers, I can also see it in the definition. Uh, but it's just something about it when we, when we get, to, get to know our design, we can take responsibility for our design and it doesn't leak out as as um, interference uh, or dissonance in the world and that's really i mean that's really amazing and then it's almost like an, an emotional person can kind of afford to just make a decision in in the wave <laughs> and and what else it's like in a projector can can afford to take initiative and a manifester can just do its thing without informing because it's still there's so much integrity in in the rest of it right and um yeah, I just feel like there is really something that comes beyond the sign where we don't get stuck at the Australian authority. We don't get stuck with the shadow of the core wound or, you know, even like the essence or the grail of the pearl. It's like, oh, my life is supposed to look like risk taking uh, in celebration. I mean, that's my pearl. Well, yeah, that's really cool to know. But my life is also going to be much more than risk taking in celebration. So it's, it's that it's that courage to really go into it even deep to the lines and the colors and the tones of each one of your gates maybe and transcend it and allow for 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 that play for that i mean i guess in one way we could say that this is the choicelessness that once it becomes automatic we kind of we don't decide we're just the we're just a passenger in the vehicle so i in one way i would say that human design is even it's even made in a way to make us understand that we are passengers and I have, the thing is though that I've seen it very few times. With the gene keys, I feel like it's not so much that thing. It's like we do kind of come in more to the spiritual, to the higher frequencies, but we don't speak about so much that we just become an observer of, of the Maya. I mean, Richard does in some on the, of the keys, but it's not like the general, the general thing, what, what we first think of with the gene keys. In human design, like I said, we are we are becoming the passenger we are understanding the choices lessness we're allowing our design to kind of take us through life but what i see is that a, very few people do that so i guess maybe this is an invitation to to dare to play to know your design and dare dare to let it live through you without having all these rules of how it's supposed to be and in the jinkies without focusing on the shadow so much or the shadow work or what's wrong but actually really starting to play with a with the gift frequencies which is the pathways uh and and they are so that pathways i i mean i would say it's so broad it's almost like it's the, it's the very at the very end you have the city at the very beginning you have the shadow and then that that pathway of the gift is so amazingly big and 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 vast and, and nuanced and we can play with all with all that that is in between the the shadow and the city and and then we will we would just have that whole play of, of, of everything, of all the polarities and everything in between. So thank you for being here with me in, in black and in, and in the discovery of what it is to live beyond your design. Thank you.